Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Welcome to St. Peter's Lutheran Church on this Lord's Day. Today there's no Sunday school or confirmation class, but fellowship does follow the service in the parish hall. Please join in. There's some beautiful looking cupcakes in there. Whoever brought those, thank you. And so please stay and join in a time of fellowship. This week, the newsletter deadline is tomorrow. Also, tomorrow there's quilting at 9 a.m. and the Monday night Bible study at 6.30. Tuesday, there's choir practice here at St. Peter's. And Wednesday, the Hope Circle meets and the Wednesday morning Bible study. And that evening at 5.30, there is supper and at 7 p.m. is worship, and you will be blessed to have Pastor Dean Greer from First Lutheran in Audubon leading worship that evening, and I will be at First Lutheran in Audubon. In, on Friday evening, there's a tubing outing for all the Sunday school kiddos and the youth of the church, and next Sunday we'll be busy with um, after worship and Sunday school, there is First Communion instruction. And then that evening, there is Beer and Hymns at the Cormorant Pub. Hope to see you there. That's at 6.30 next Sunday. Today's the deadline for filling out the Easter lilies sheet. You'll need to get these turned in um, today if you'd like to contribute an Easter lily. And uh, are there other announcements from the congregation today? I was told by a very sweet little girl that it's her mother's birthday today. Shauna Bach, it's her birthday. Can you wave at us, Shauna, over there? <laughs> I think we need to sing happy birthday. So are you ready? Okay. Don, can you lead us? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Shauna. Happy birthday to you. God's blessings on this day and the rest of this year. All right, so let's begin worship this morning. Please stand. All right. We gather this morning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. God of all mercy and consolation, Come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your Spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. Let's join in singing our opening hymn. Worship continues on page 147. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. 
In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. We pray together the prayer of the day. It's on your celebrate insert. God of the covenant, in the mystery of the cross, you promise everlasting life to the world. Gather all peoples into your arms and shelter us with your mercy, that we may rejoice in the life we share in your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading comes from Genesis chapter 15, 1 through 12, 17 through 18. After these things, the word of the Lord came to Abram in a vision. Do not, be afraid, do not be afraid, Abram. I am your shield. Your reward shall be very great. But Abram said, O Lord God, what will you give me? For I continue childless, and the heir of my house is Eliezer of Damascus. And Abram said, You have given me no offspring, and so a slave born in my house is to be my heir. But the word of the Lord came to him, This man shall not be your heir. No one but your very own issue shall be your heir. He brought him outside and said, Look toward the heaven and count the stars, if you are able to count them. Then he said to him, So shall your descendants be. And he believed the Lord, and the Lord reckoned him reckoned to him as righteousness. Then he said to him, I am the Lord who brought you from Ur of the Chaldeans to give you this land to possess. But he said, O Lord God, how am I to know that I shall possess it? He said to him, Bring me a heifer three years old, a female goat three, three years old, a ram three years old, a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. He brought him all these things and cut them in two, laying each half over the other. But he did not cut the birds in two. And when the birds of prey came down on the carcasses, Abram drove them away. As the sun was going down, a deep sleep fell upon Abram, and a deep and terrifying darkness descended upon him. When the sun had gone down and it was dark, a smoking fire pot and a flaming torch passed between the pieces. On that day, the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, To your descendants I give this land, from the river of Egypt to the great river, the river of Euphrates. Read this psalm responsibly. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom then shall I fear? The Lord is the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Though war rise up against me, my trust will not be shaken. For in the day of trouble, God will give me shelter. Hide me in the hidden places of the sanctuary and rise me up high on a rock. Therefore, 
Hear my voice, O Lord, when I call. Have mercy on me and answer me. Hide not your face from me. Turn not away from your servant in anger. Cast me not away. You have been my helper. Forsake me not, O God of my salvation. Teach me your way, O Lord. Lead me on a level path because of my oppressors. This I believe, that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The second reading comes from Philippians chapter 3, verses 17 through chapter 4, verse 1. Brothers and sisters, join in initiating me and observe those who live according to the example you have in us. For many live as enemies of the cross of Christ. I have often told you of them, and now I will tell you even with tears. Their end is destruction. Their God is the belly, and their glory is in their shame. Their minds are set on earthly things. But our citizenship is in heaven, and it is from there that we are expecting a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. He will transform the body of our humiliation that it may be conformed to the body of his glory by the power that enables him to make all things subject to himself. Therefore, my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. Here ends the reading. Please stand for the reading of the gospel. The Holy Gospel for this Lord's Day is from Luke, the 13th chapter. We join in reading this gospel together. At that very hour, some Pharisees came and said to Jesus, Get away from here, for Herod wants to kill you. He said to them, Go and tell that fox for me. Listen, I'm casting out demons and performing cures today and tomorrow, and on the third day I finish my work. Yet today, tomorrow, and the next day I must be on my way, because it is impossible for a prophet to be killed outside of Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, the city that kills the prophets and stones those who are sent to it. How often have I desired to gather your children together as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, and you were not willing. See, your house is left to you, and I tell you, you will not see me until the time comes when you say, Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. We confess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. It's on page 105. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated. And if the children would come forward for the children's message at this time. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, good morning. Good to see you. How are you today? All right. Come on down. <laughs> so, um, now in the Bible, especially in one book of the Bible, Jesus said that he was 
like a lot of different things. He said, what did he say? He said, I am the light of the world. He said, I am the true vine. He said, I am the gate. Let's see, what else did he say? I am the resurrection and the life, the good shepherd. And he even one time said that he was like a food. What was it? Bread. Bread. Yes. He said, I am the bread of life. So now, why do you think he would say that? Yeah, he wants to give us good food, yes, and God sure does, doesn't he? You know, he gives us what we need. Yeah? Yeah, yes, that was a good thing he said. So, and bread is kind of this fundamental thing that people have eaten all, you know, through through time and in different cultures. And can you think of different kinds of bread? Because there's all different kinds of bread. Chocolate chip bread, that sounds good. Yeah, yeah. Raisin bread, oh, that's good. Yeah, what else? Banana bread, yes, very good. Apple bread, there is, yeah. Regular bread, yep, there's regular bread. There's whole wheat bread, rye bread, pumpernickel. Oh, my goodness, sourdough, French loaves. What? What? Apple bread, yep, mm hmm, yep. White bread, wheat bread, all kinds of breads, aren't there? You know, when I w and, and bread, um, you know, so many people eat it as part of the meal. It goes with something else. And in uh, different cultures, they have different forms of like bready things that they eat with, like a stew or whatever. And I was thinking about when I was in West Africa, you know what they called their bread? They called it fufu, which is just fun to say, isn't it? Fufu. And it was like a, it was really doughy and it was like in a ball. They gave it to you and you pinched off a piece of it and you dipped it in your stew to eat it. But that was like their bread that they ate most of the time. And so Jesus says that he is the bread of life. And what does bread do? Yeah? Does it fill us up when we're hungry? And it's good for you, yeah? We need it, don't we? We need it to survive. And so Jesus, you know, he's like, I, if you're fed with me, fed with my word, I'll fill you up. I'll fill up your spirit and I'll fill up your lives. And what is one place that in worship we often remember that Jesus is the bread of life, yeah? In communion, yes. We have the bread and the wine, and what do we, and what do we say that that is? The bread and the wine in communion, yeah? And the bread is? The body, yes, the body and the blood of Jesus Christ. Pretty soon we're going to have a first communion class. So those of you who've never had communion, you'll get to learn all about it, yeah? You're going to come? Good, good, because Jesus wants all of us to share in that meal where we remember that how Jesus fills us up and he's their bread of life. So let's pray together today. Dear Lord, we thank you for all that you are to us, so mysterious and yet so near to us in every way. Lord, bless each of these children today and each day and help them to know how much you love them. We thank you for your blessings. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, and there's, you can have a piece of candy on your way back if you'd like. Thank you for coming up. Lord be with you. Well, 
I was thinking about a couple from the church that I served, the very first church that I served up in New York State. They were very nice folks, and, and the wife, her name was Diane, and she was a fabulous cook, just fabulous. And each year, this church would have a talent auction as kind of one of their big fundraisers. And for the talent auction, people would, like if someone was really good at quilting, they would contribute a quilt and someone would bid on it. Or if someone was really good at making pies, you know, they'd contribute a pie and people would bid on it. And what Diane would do each year was she would contribute two German dinners and these were like the prize things. It was always like the, the items that went for the most amount because everybody knew that Diane was a great cook and these German meals that she cooked had a fabulous reputation. And so when Chad and I were, were first married, she invited Chad and I to come over to their home and she was going to cook this meal for us. And I was struck by how much care she put into that meal. The, f the food was just so beautifully presented, and she, and in addition to being beautifully presented, it was delicious, and it was nourishing, and their home was so warm and welcoming, and, and I loved how Diane and her husband put so much effort into sharing these gifts that God had given them of providing a meal and providing hospitality to show love for the people around them. When you left their home, you not only felt full, but you felt loved and cared for. And as a side note, looking back, I have even more appreciation for this gift that they shared because I didn't realize back then, because I couldn't, because I didn't have children yet, that it was particularly amazing that they would regularly have people over for these great meals because they had a four-year-old and a newborn at the time. Extraordinary. That blows my mind now. Well, we all know people who show f love through food, right? It's, and it's a beautiful thing. I mean, that hot dish that's brought over when a family is going through a time of grief, that's a lot more than a hot dish. That's, that's love being brought over. Or the meal that's provided by the ladies of the church after a funeral. That's not just a meal. That's, this is love that we want to share with you. And so we know what it means to experience giving and receiving love through food. And so it isn't strange at all that Jesus would say to us when he's trying to tell us something about who he is, when he says, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Well, during Lent, if you're attending the midweek services, you know that, um, and I guess we've been doing this for quite a few years, that pastors kind of rotate to different pulpits during the season of Lent. And so, and we decided that this year we were going to do, um, each of us would focus on one of the different I am statements about Jesus. And John, in John, there's seven different things that Jesus says, I am. He says, I am the light of the world. I am the true vine. I am the good shepherd. I am the gate. I am the resurrection and the life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. And I am the bread of life. And each of these are beautiful symbols, and they each tell us a little something about Jesus. And this past Wednesday night, I preached at X Show, and we ate chili and crackers, and then we gathered upstairs in the sanctuary, and, and I shared my sermon about how Jesus is the bread of life, and, and how he used this illustration to talk about himself right after he performed the miracle of, of feeding the multitudes with just a, a little bit of bread and some fish. And I preached about how Jesus nourishes our bodies and souls through his body and blood. And as long as we are fed with his word, we are full with 
what we really need. Oh, it was a fine sermon. Finely constructed, finely delivered. Fine, you know. But ever since I preached it, there's been a troubling question that's kept going through my mind the rest of this week. And, and it's a troubling question that it picks away at the crumbs of peace that I have in neatly summing up Jesus as the bread of life. And so on this day, a communion Sunday, when soon we're about to share in the supper, Jesus' body and blood, receive the bread of life. I wanted to explore that question with you just a little bit. It's one of those questions that people of faith might pretend not to have, and yet we do. And the question is this. If Jesus is the bread of life who fills us, then why are there so many starving places? And I don't just mean people who are hungry. And I don't mean just the kind of hunger you might feel in your stomach, but the kind you feel in your heart. Because even though we gather here and, and we confess Jesus is our bread of life, and even though those of us who gather here love him so much, and we love our church, and we confess that Jesus is Lord of our lives, sometimes the truth is that we feel hungry, even starving for something we can't even name. And how can we help it? I mean, the world is full of starving places. We see brokenness all around. We see addictions that ruin lives and homes. Every one of us walk around carrying questions that can't be answered, thinking about the healing that didn't come, thinking about sadness. And it seems to me that we are hungry. We're so hungry for peace and, and for answers and for healing and for joy. And, and so this bread of life, what has it done to feed that hunger? Because the hungry places of our lives, they don't just disappear the moment that we say we confess that Jesus is the Lord of our lives. And that's not all. You know what else is troubling? Let me tell you something else. That there's this hushed fear that we hardly dare think about. But there it is, humming beneath the surface of our days. There's the doubt. There's the distrust. There's the truth that sometimes we honestly have trouble believing in Jesus and all that he said. And if that isn't true, then how else can we explain the fact that we don't really live like we believe in this gospel? Here's an example. Jesus says, do for others as, as you would have them do for you. And yet I wonder who among us hasn't reasoned that we were too busy or too broke or too whatever to help someone who came to us in need. And Jesus says, if you want to be perfect, go sell all you have and give your money to the poor and you'll have riches in heaven. And yet, the last time I checked, most of us not only have the things that we need, but a few more things in our garages, in our storage sheds. And Jesus says, the one who is least among you is the greatest. And yet, whose call would we return quicker you know, if your favorite celebrity called or if that annoying neighbor down the road who keeps borrowing your tools and not returning them, you know? If we really stop to think about it, this gospel is so troubling. It asks impossible things of us. And so it becomes easiest to just smile and talk about how full we feel with the bread of life when we aren't. And then we compare our less than holy actions to others instead of to the standard God holds for us. And yet the vision that 
captures my attention this week is this. How would it feel if we could be really truthful in our faith or our lack of it? If instead of smiling and talking about how full we feel with the bread of life, if we could just look at each other and admit that we feel hungry sometimes. And that's scary. And I think about how great it would be if we could really be honest when we talk to each other about how we do manipulate the gospel to fit the way we're living and that we don't really live like people who've had any kind of real revolution happen in our hearts. I think if we could do that, it would be, it would be wonderful. Because it's only when we begin to admit those desperately flawed things about ourselves, that's when we realize how desperately we need a savior. If you came here today, by the way, looking for a real feel-good message, this isn't the day or the season. It's Lent, people. Come on. And if there's any time for soul-searching, this is it. Here we are. We're a gathering of broken people, and we make selfish choices. We worry and we distrust even the God who lovingly knit us together. And it takes so dreadfully little to turn our eyes and our thoughts and our hearts away from him and towards shiny things or, or toward a little cash or toward that juicy piece of gossip. This is us. This is us. And Martin Luther would say that it's only when we can acknowledge that truth about our sinfulness that we should dare come to the altar rail for communion. We don't share in this sacrament because it's a nice thing to do. We don't share in it because it's a tribute to what Jesus did for us. We share in this sacrament because we are starving for the bread of life. We are beggars at his table and we come just as we are. We come full of our doubts. We come full of our flaws. And all of our questions, bring them all. We come lacking in so many ways, and you know what? He still sets out his best for us. Not because we are good, but because he is good. The finest feast, the warmest welcome every time we come to his table. Yes, there are those hungry places in our hearts, in our world. But those aren't places God is absent. If we don't see him or feel him there yet, it's because our vision is cloudy, not God's. Those hungry places, they are just the places where God's glory and provision are yet to be shown, either to us or through us. We can trust that the bread of life will be enough for us. Keep turning to Jesus. Keep on turning to Jesus to feed that hunger you feel. Keep on being fed by his word. Keep on being fed at this table. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come to you humbly. Lord, we know that we are fearfully and wonderfully made, and yet we are also a group of broken, busted up people sometimes. We have our flaws, and you know every one of them. We're so imperfect, God, and yet you love us so much. We thank you for that love. We thank you that we can be together, be honest about how much we need you, because we do so much. Lord, today we lift up in our prayers so many who are in need of our prayers. 
those who need healing, those who are hospitalized today. Help them to know that our, our prayers surround them. Don't let them feel alone. Help them feel supported by you, by us. We pray for those who are lonesome, for those for whom these winter days get very long. We pray for those who are grieving. There's been losses in people's lives, Lord, and please surround them with your grace, your peace that passes all understanding. Lord, so many prayers we have in our hearts. You know them all, but we lift them up to you. In Jesus' name, amen. We join in the great thanksgiving on page 152. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks and broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this to remember me. Again after supper he took the cup, gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sin. Do this to remember me. We pray the prayer Jesus taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The table is prepared. All are welcome. You may be seated. Please stand for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace until life everlasting. Amen. We join in singing together our sending song, Blessed Assurance. <laughs> 